Hello everybody, welcome to the unboxing of the Tantric Dakini Oracle. Now, this deck is actually, let's say, a bit more old school because it was actually created in the 70s. <laughs> How awesome is that? So, the artwork, perhaps we may call it outdated a little bit, but I don't think it is, honestly. I've been looking at this deck for a while. I've been kind of flirting with it. I've been watching other unboxings and other reviews of it, and I finally just had to have it. I've had to have it. And I finally, it's here with me and I love it. It is a powerful deck. It is very much about shadow work. It does not shy away from the darkness of life sometimes, but also from the beauty of it. And you guys will see in the cards what I mean. So here's the box. Actually, it's a pretty big box. If we're talking about the Rider Waite Smith box comparison, which is just, I have the original, it's small box, it's huge. <laughs> All right, but very, very sturdy, super good box, and it opens up like a drawer, like this. Now, as you can see, I've taken the book and the deck out, so I'm going to show you guys, you know, and also I carry um, my deck, especially because this one, if you guys can tell, it comes divided. So it's half the deck is here and the other half is here. It's not really divided by suits or anything. Uh, although in the book, they do have tarot associations, but it's not really divided. But in the box, it is divided like that. And especially when decks come like this for me, I usually take them out and I put it in a bag. Um, in this case, for me, it's in just this red bag that I have, this red tarot bag. Now, here's the book. Let me, to, let me put the box aside. So, you know, the plastic is in here. Of course, the plastic is removable. And you can just slide it away and we'll put it right here. So here is the book. It is a proper book. It is thick. It's big. <laughs> um, let's see how many pages are on here. 207. So it's a pretty big, pretty big book, honestly. It has um, spreads on the back. Wait, so we just went through a bunch of them. <laughs> see here, here's another spread that we have. So there's a there's a spread. Actually, as you can see, a lot of cards are on this spread. So big spreads, big explanation. We've got more um, spreads over here as well. We've got some some pretty big ones, some smaller ones too. It explains you everything. Direct reading onto the Tree of Life chart. So here you've got a Tree of Life spread, and of course about the authors towards the end. But in the beginning. In the beginning of the book, we have Look into the mirror of your mind, the home of the secret Dakini. Now, I love that. Of course, you have your contents, your preface, uh, a bit explaining what a tantric is. See, right here it says the tantric, the Kini oracle, and the tarot. So it does have associations to it. Uh, I'm a tarot card reader, as you guys can tell from my channel. I do weekly readings. Um, I have not used this deck because I'll be very honest with you guys. I do have certain decks that I purchase and I do unboxings here, but I don't use them for clients because I find these certain decks, for example, this one, to be just very intimate, very powerful, and very personal where I keep them in my private collection and I use them only for myself. Honestly, these kinds of decks that I have, I barely cleanse them <laughs> because I want them to have my energy. And this, so far, some have shifted out of that moment, some have shifted in, but so far this one is private. You know, I use it for myself because I find it to be that powerful. You're going to have um, a black and white image of the card, of course, the number, the title of it. This one, for example, is like a bubble. And then you have about a paragraph and a page and a half of explaining the the symbolism, the, num the numerology. For example, this one here, usually in the first paragraph, in the last line of the first paragraph, it usually will tell you, um, normally related to the suit of cups in the minor arcana of, of the traditional tarot. So this one just kind of gives you minor arcana. There are other ones where it will tell you specifically which card it is in the tarot. But for example, this one, self-preservation, just says related to the suit of swords in the minor arcana of the traditional tarot. Usually in the first paragraph, you got the, this last line talking about the tarot. The rest of it is the notary meaning and explaining the symbolism of the cards. Now let's get to them. <laughs> so I've got them right here. 
the cardstock honestly is not bad. It's not bad. It's pretty thick, you know, not, of course not the thickest, especially now for, you know, our modern uh, perspective. There are decks out there that have thicker and thicker cards, but I personally don't mind a flimsier cardstock. To me, a lot of times they hold up more than the really thick ones. Sometimes the thick ones when you riffle shuffle, you know, when you kind of like do that, like riffle shuffling, like a lot of people do, right? I'm not going to really do it now, but just demonstrate half when people do this and they go, you know, <laughs> um, usually I find that those thick ones kind of destroy it more. So here at the backs, you've got this white border, which doesn't really bother me. I'm okay with it, but you know, for a lot of us, it can. But I do like how it is rounded on the edges because if you want to just follow the border and edge it or cut it away, you can. Now I do have here the traditional um, Rider Waite Smith tarot. And as you can see, it is taller and wider, not by a whole lot, but it is taller and wider. All right, just wanted to show you guys that. So how many cards are there? There are 64 cards in this deck. Now, I will be showing you guys all of the cards. I'm going to show you all 64. If you do not want to see all of them, you can double tap to the right of your screen or you can fast forward because when you double tap it, fast forward about 10 seconds at a time um, if you don't want to see the whole thing or if you can just skip this part altogether. But I will be showing you everything, okay? So the first one is Joker, which we can kind of easily associate with the tarot if you are a tarot reader. Mercury, very associated with Hermes, the god Mercury. Also, the tarot is the magician, number one, which is associated with Hermes and Mercury as well. So these to me are the most obvious ones. Actually, this the, the first few are the most obvious because we have goddess Isis, number two, which is the high priestess in the tarot. We have the scarlet woman, which to me, I really associate with God, the goddess Kali. And I'm one, I'm a huge fan of goddess Isis. I'm a huge fan of goddess Kali. The hot seat, number four. So as you guys can see, it's very collage, right? You have this throne here, then you have this like galaxy on fire in the background. Lord Ganesh, also I'm a huge fan of Lord Ganesh <laughs> as well. Lord of Obstacles. Wish Fulfilling Gem. So, you know, follows some modern um, artwork, follows some traditional artwork as well. Now, because of its age and because it is collage, some of the images, like the, I'm not sure if you guys can see it, because honestly, when I was watching other unboxings of other decks, um, they look really good on camera. And honestly, they look really good in person as well. I don't want to turn you off about that. But in person, this gem is a little bit pixelated. It doesn't bother me. I'm honestly unbothered by it. But for I just want to let you guys, for some of you, maybe you might be bothered and you're like, no, I will not deal with that. <laughs> totally cool. No big deal. I don't mind it. Now, here's where we get dark with this deck. Cremation ground, meditation. Now, how do those things go together, right? And this is one of the things that really intrigued me about this deck. How do those things go together? And I'll, I'm gonna, honestly, I have not read this card in the book, so I can't really explain it to you, but it is in the book. Living Goddess, the way through, this might be another obvious one, Wheel of Great Time might be, and also number 10, number 10 in tarot is the Wheel of Fortune, self-created, I love that, slay the ego, <laughs> Death and Transfiguration. That is absolutely such a great word for the death card. Puja and Purification. Ally. Now, as I told you guys, this deck does not shy away from, <laughs> from graphic images. This one is one that initially turned me off in the deck. Of course, it's called the Holocaust, and you got these eyeballs coming out of, you know, this building or whatever it is um this really turned me off for a while i think that's why i kept looking at unboxings like i want this deck but because of this i'm like Ugh, i don't know if i really wanted but me personally i wasn't gonna let one card 
stop me from 63 other amazing cards. This is honestly the most shocking one I find. Or at least with the name with the name, you know, the title is the most shocking one that I find. But we have Island of Jewels, Soma, Phoenix, who doesn't love that? Transformation. Earthbound for those of us that are star seeds. <laughs> Mother's Milk. I just found this deck to be so interesting and galactic, but also Hindu. As you guys can see, there are a lot of Indian, Middle Eastern, you know, um, imagery to it. And I love that. See this one, Mean and Heavy, also kind of got its Kali energy, but I love that. I love these kinds of Hindu uh, imagery. Magic Carpet. This I just found to be kind of hilarious is the Cosmic Carrot. Like what in the world is that? And there are some cards in here like that. Self-preservation. Castles in the Clouds, I love that. Just passing through. Shiva, the Pillar of Fire. Eternal Life. Burning Bush, the Lineage Tree, as above, so below, absolutely. Guardian, <laughs> Fire of Sacrifice. The imagery to me, just and, and the titles, just really kind of, they really demand your attention. They did for me anyway, they really demanded my attention. Serpent Power, this one, for example, I talked about being pixelated um, getting real up and close and personal with you guys. <laughs> but this lightning is, to me, the most pixelated image in the whole deck. All right, but I want to just really show you guys, because the snake looks awesome. But then, you know, this, again, it doesn't bother me. I'm not turned off by it at all. But I want to show you guys. Blow your mind. This one, while, again, very shocking image, right? You have this atomic bomb, but then you have this brain on top. I found this to be just really, really different. I've never seen a deck quite like this. So I, I personally just really had to go for it. As of the making of this video i have not really been working with it that much oh here we go like a bubble we saw that before so i have not been working with it that much so i just love the images i actually put them back in order to show you guys it was not in order because i shuffled it a few times for myself i kept getting the, the hot seat it was number four i believe in here we kept getting i kept getting the hot seat so i thought that was interesting to me it's like all right it wants to talk to me white lady mother of pearl Cutting through, could be like cutting cords, things like that. I love that. Recall and memory, which I find this to be really interesting because you have these shells, right? And you put uh, um, one of these to your ear and you can hear the ocean. So it's almost like this recall, this memory that you're bringing back again. I don't know. Deep end is super beautiful. So like, like these two, for example, or these three even, you have such peaceful images right uh the rose garden just a bunch of beautiful roses i i personally love love roses i have you know a bunch of them tattooed on my arm <laughs> but then you are paired with shocking images like the other ones you know like that blow, blow your mind one this one also i found to be hilarious totally bananas are you kidding me that's amazing I like a little bit of humor in my decks because that's life. Life is dark, but also life is funny and life is peaceful. And like in this one, life is sexual, isn't it? So I don't know. I, I really found this deck to just really speak, speak in, a, in a very different language that I personally really wanted to learn. Pearls Before Swine, that to me also really funny, but also kind of deep and different and juxtaposition between beautiful pearls and like a pig that we deem so dirty right of course not all of us but that's the general consensus if we're generalizing the meaning of it 
This to me I also found very shocking, the survival and then pollution of the air. <laughs> this one, I think it's awesome. The title of it, the cats, you know, the, uh, the lions on here, <laughs> just amazing. Centering the present and the last laugh, the future. This is the last card of the deck. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review, this unboxing. Thank you so much for joining me and have a beautiful week out there. Much love.